Hi, this is Michael Oral from MobileBurn.com, and I have with me today the new Samsung Continuum. It's a Galaxy S-Class Android smartphone for Verizon Wireless, and it features dual Super AMOLED displays, the main one up here and a secondary one down here, and it's on sale now and available for $199.99 after a $100 mail-in rebate. So let's open up the box and see what comes inside. First up, of course, is the Continuum itself. And let's see what else we've got in here. Here's the Samsung charger. With the USB port on the side of it. That works with this cable right here. Full size USB on one side and micro USB, of course, for connecting to the phone. Plug it in like that or plug it into your computer. And that appears to be pretty much it. Just uh, tips, hints, start guide, terms, conditions, that kind of stuff. So here's the continuum. See, we've got dual displays here. You can see kind of the bluish colored here, separated by a black strip. So that's a 3.4 inch wide VGA resolution touchscreen. And this one down here is 1.8 inches. Uh, and it's, I believe it's 480 by 96 pixels, and the touch sensitive controls go in the middle there. On the left hand edge, we've got the dual buttons for volume and the micro USB charging port, lanyard fixing point up here at the top. Top edge is home to power, unlike other Galaxy S devices, which have it up here on the right hand edge. Uh, three and a half millimeter headphone jack as well. Got a micro SD memory card in there, 8 gig card pre installed. And there's the camera shutter button, microphone hole on the bottom. And on the back, you can see we've got the 5 megapixel autofocus camera with its LED flash and just a Galaxy S logo here. The Continuum comes with a 1500 milliamp hour battery stock. It's good for 7 hours of talk time or 13 days of standby. But Verizon offers a much larger 2600 milliamp hour battery for $50, and you can buy an extended back to use with it for an additional $5. In profile, the device is about 14 and a half millimeters thick, which is uh, not too bad. It weighs about 123 grams, which is uh, also quite reasonable. You heard that beep come in there, and that means I have a message or something. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab the phone here, and you'll see how that activated the bottom screen. It just told me that I have new messages. So without having to unlock the phone, you can actually bring up your information. So let me show you that again. I'll uh, turn it off grab the sensor here and then I'm going to tap to go right to messaging so you can see I've got two messages here and this is the standard Samsung um, TouchWiz 3.0 text messaging client and you can also now see the touch sensitive controls here this screen itself is actually part of the, uh, the system that activates when you grab it. Uh, it just gives you an overview of all your social networking stuff, RSS feeds, and missed events like messages. And of course, the combined view that we've already seen. Now if I turn off the phone again, activate it, I can always just unlock it and you know, do whatever I want, such as go to the home screen. But even though I'm at the home screen now, this uh, sub display is still useful. I can tap on this here to automatically get to weather, tap back, or I can hit here to get to the full list of all the events. Seven home screens in the default configuration. Notice the little uh, settings button up the top. If you tap there, that allows you to go through and rearrange the order of the dis of the home screen panels or delete them say I didn't want that one and didn't want that one but then I could go through and add new ones here and then I can choose whichever one I want to be the main home panel this one so now I've got only one over to the right of the main home panel the five over here If I long press the home button here, um, not only does it bring, give you access to recently run applications, it also allows you to get to the Samsung Task Manager so you can kill off applications that you don't need. So since we have some new email messages, 
can see I have two different accounts here. Both of them are AOL accounts, um, just by chance. I tap through here and get to the email client. You can see I can easily switch between accounts. You can have multiple accounts. And then there's a combined inbox, which shows them all. You can see it says test message to aim in this box. Hey, this should be on in this one. And then they're both in the combined view, which is really handy. Let's see if it goes into landscape mode, and it does. Pull up one of the messages. Tap on applications, get to the main menu. By default, it's in a grid view. Can switch to the list view as well. But a uh, grid's a little more interesting, and you actually have the ability to rearrange things and move things from one panel to the other and add new panels even and of course just by long pressing on something you can drop a shortcut onto one of the home screen panels if you decide to get rid of that shortcut all you have to do is long press it and then drag it to the trash can Bing is the search engine of choice on the device and it supports voice searching but I've had very little luck getting it to work so instead we're going to type in something this also gives me the opportunity to show you the swipe keyboard uh, so I'm going to type in my name Michael Oral, and then I can search the web on that and we'll get search results back you can also use it for local search say pizza and some advertisements but local results come right up even with uh, ratings and everything which is really cool Verizon's very capable VZ Navigator is loaded on the device by default, but if you prefer the free Google Maps solution, you can just go to the Android market and download and install it. Now this is an Android 2.1 device, so there's no auto-update for applications or anything like that. Each application has to be manually updated when there is an update available. But the Android 2.2 update, which we hope to see not too far from now, will support the auto-update feature.